I am now going to talk through three ratio problems. These are all typical questions you might expect in your GCSE. So we are told a ratio of boys to girls, which is two to three. This means for every two boys in the room, there are three girls. So, if there are 26 boys in the room, this means that there are 13 lots of these two boys. 2 times 13 is 26. For the ratio to maintain itself, there must also be 13 lots of girls. 13 times 3 is 39. So there are 26 boys and 39 girls. So how many girls are there? There are 39 girls. In a similar way, Suppose you're told the ratio of boys to girls is 4 to 3. So boys to girls is 4 to 3. In every group, so to speak, there are 4 boys and 3 girls, which makes a total of 7 per group. But there are 77 children in total. So in total, there are 77. So in each group, there are four, four boys and three girls. There must therefore be 11 groups, because 7 times 11 is 77. So if there are 11 groups, and in each group there are four boys and three girls, there must be 44 boys and 33 girls, giving you your 77 children in total. So how many boys are there? There are 44 boys. Final question. The ratio of men to women is 2 to 3. So men to women is 2 to 3. Per group, if there's 2 men and 3 women, there is a total of 5 in each group. But there are 40 people in the room. If there are 40 people, that must be 8 groups, because 5 times 8 is 40. So, there must be 16 men and 24 women, making 40 in total. So the ratio of men to women in its highest form, rather than its lowest form, is 16 to 24. But five men enter the room. So if five more men enter, rather than 16 men, if we add five men, there will now be 21 men, but still 24 women. So this is the new ratio of men to women women. However, a ratio can cancel down. If we look for a factor, we can observe how we can divide by 3. And that gives us 21 shared into f by 3 is 7, and 24 divided by 3 is 8. And that gives us the new ratio of men to women with the new men having entered in its simplest form, 
we have therefore solved all three ratio problems.